squash, acorn squash, some red, uh, sweet red peppers, some onions, and uh, and then I've got some other surprises to put on it once it's roasted. Okay, and w if we wanted to make this recipe, Frank, where would we find it? Well, I will have this recipe up this week on the Food Talk TV blog in the kitchen. So it's foodtalktv.com slash in the kitchen. We try and get as many of our creator recipes up as possible. Sometimes they're original, as in we've made them up, or, um, you know, uh, Ashton, you're, you love to bring all of your recipes from your family and your friends. We always try to, uh, to give credit when we, we get recipes from folks. But, you know, a lot of recipes that are common to, like, our family probably originated somewhere else. So that's where you can find it. All right. So I'm going to jump in. Uh, let me know when you want to interrupt or go forward. I am good. So the first I thing I want to – yep, go ahead. I have, I have a question to ask you. While you're cutting up the bacon, can you move your camera a little bit to the right so that we can see the bacon? Because my, me and Bradley are covering up your cutting board, hon. I will be happy to, as a matter of fact. So let me talk about the bacon. So let me, let me put out one thing right now. Shelf-stable bacon is not a sin. If you do not eat bacon enough, we're buying it and leaving it in your refrigerator so it goes bad because you have forgotten it's in there, is a thing that happens. These new shelf-stable bacon, that means they're, they come in cryovac packages, and you put them in your shelves. You do not need to put these in the refrigerator, and they last. The only thing I do recommend please, is double check, double check the packaging because I found a package of bacon recently on, uh, in the grocery store and it was not shelf stable and they actually should have been refrigerated and they left it out. And I only found that out because I bought it and I made it and I got sick. Uh, the, 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 the grocery store was incredibly embarrassed, but so, you know, do your due diligence but um, the shelf-stable bacon. So this is what it looks like. It's pre-cooked. And you know what? You throw it in a pan. It's the same thing Subway uses. It's, it's almost, except I think it's a little better tasting. Um, I, I got the Oscar Mayer today because of where I am. That's what is uh, it was available. But you can so use, there's several different brands. Your salt and pepper shakers, are those whales? Yes, they are whales. They that were a gift. So cute. I was just looking at them. I like those. This is a big theme here in the Cape. And our, my friend Lisa actually um, uh, gave them to us when we when we got the, the condo here. And it matches my shell themed teapot, creamer, and um, sugar cup container. Now, All right. would you be able to find those and put those on the website in case anybody wanted to buy them on their Amazon? Uh, you know, I, I will look because they actually were from a uh, uh, design that was popular. But I'll look. Uh, uh, I'm happy. I'll put it on our, our Food Talk Amazon page. Sure. So totally I, would be happy to. I know that this is Frank's live, but you're always so quiet, honey. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself while Frank is cutting up his stuff? Who, me? Yeah, yeah you. Yeah, you. Oh, me. Well, I'm, uh, let's see, 56 years old, Army veteran, married to a wonderful woman, um, currently on medical leave because I'm about to have shoulder surgery. Dixie Lou 13's in here. That's my wife. Um, I love to cook, and I decided in, when I was 54 years old to go to culinary school. So here I am. There you go. Well, you, you are definitely in the right place. Uh, all of our creators have different food backgrounds. People like myself, uh, Sherry, Ashton, uh, Trish, a lot of us grew up around food. We cook our family recipes. We do have though, some folks who've cooked in restaurants. I was a short order cook. That's how I put myself through college. I have to say, I, thir I was a third chef in a French restaurant for a year uh, when I was in high school. I loved it, but I'll tell you, I still love short order cooking. There's something about that feet, that fast, that speed. Um, I, I thought about going to culinary school, but then I had other desires and dreams. So now I get to cook for everybody. I get to cook for family and friends. And that's really what brings us here. So 
uh, Brad, as, as one of our, our newest family, I am so excited to have you with us. And, and I, I can't wait to have you at cooking once you're, you're feeling better. And I'm welcome to your wife as well. I decided uh, my VA benefits were about to end and I really didn't have a lot of choices. So that's why I picked culinary school. And my dream is to have a food truck. So, oh, fun. I've seen those where people take old campers and then remodel them and have food trucks. I, <laughs> so that. I thought that would be so cool to do that if I ever move back to like, the States. I would just have like a little southern food truck. You'd have like three things you wanted, and then you could pick your size. And then if you want a cornbread, biscuits, or rolls, you know. And then it was just like a menu, pick what you want. You know what I mean? A meat, a side, two side dishes, and a, and a, and a bread. Well, I think that's what makes that's food trucks so exciting is you can make them what you want. With a food truck, you have to have a simple, good menu, and you have to be consistent, and you have to have a schedule. Because there are people will travel to go to your food truck if you put out good food. All right, let me interrupt you guys just because I have to get these. Um, I have to get this in the oven, okay, uh, so that we can start it cooking and I can finish. So what I have done in this bowl right here, there is one small butternut squash, one small acorn squash. They are both peeled and cut. Now I will recommend, unless okay. you like peeling, buy the pre-peeled one. I did these all by hand. I made them bite size instead of the big pieces. I also put a uh, red pepper and an onion and i made everything very similar in size i also added salt pepper a little bit of red pepper flakes and um some freeze-dried herbs just an italian herb mix all right you know something frank that a lot of people don't know when they hear chili flakes they think oh spicy well of course it's gonna be spicy if you add too many but if you add just a little bit of crushed red pepper flakes to a lot of dishes like the north carolina barbecue sauce or you know, your chili or any kind of like soups or anything like that. It really just helps bring out the flavor, especially uh, I know red chili flakes are a big thing for Italian cuisine because a lot of it goes into tomato sauces and stuff like that. So it helps bring out that flavor. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be spicy, but it does mean that it's going to give it another depth of flavor and you're all about deepening your flavors. I, I like blending and deepening flavors, and I think you're right. So so when you're buying crushed red pepper, um, it doesn't matter what brand you're buying, but it really is. If you eat them just like this, like I sprinkle them on pizza, uh, I particularly like them on um, baked potatoes with sour cream and butter. You know, I figure if I'm having a baked potato, I'm going to go for the fat. But when you add them to something, especially that has a fat in it, the dried red pepper, uh, crushed red pepper, absorbs into the fat and actually it does it gives you heat but it doesn't overwhelm it, it um, and i think that, it, that you know crushed red pepper is definitely this italian style one is definitely much more mild than some of the uh, szechuan or other uh, asian style peppers which i do eat and, and switch out all right so what i did is i just in a, the same bowl i prepped my my vegetables early uh, i added two tablespoons of olive oil um, and, you know, you have to play this by eye because if, you're, if your squash are bigger, you might need a, a little bit more. Essentially, you want to put enough that gives it a nice, a nice uh, coating. All right. Well, and keep in mind. I need you to do something for me, honey. We still can't. What's that? Well, uh, we're covering it up. Is there any way you can readjust your camera just a little bit, turn it down? or like, uh, Yeah, we can see it there, but we still can't. You know what I mean? Like down, like forward. Hold on a second. Let's see. Like you're looking down. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. All right. All right. Let's yeah. see. I've got one of those gooseneck on here today, so uh, you know I'm I'm roughing it at the at the at the beach house. All right. So I've got my stove pre preheating 425 degrees. I took my pre cooked bacon. Now you could do this with raw bacon. You're just going to need to roast it a little bit longer. I chopped that up. It's going in there, too. Hi, Kaz. Hey, Scott. Hi, Kaz. Now, are you going to cook all of that on the sheet pan? Is well, that what you're doing? That's right. It's now going on my sheet pan. 
I'm just going to take a little bit. And, and so let me let me say something, folks. My hands were washed before I started this. But you know what? Sometimes you have to get a little bit dirty when you cook and you can't be afraid. And I'm always amazed when I talk to folks who are who want to cook with onions and garlic, but then they don't want to get their hands wet. Well, then buy a box of latex gloves, if you like, or nitrile style gloves. But some days you're just going to have to get dirty as part of the cooking process. And I, I think that process is what makes the flavor in the food because um, it, it, it's how you end up looking for textures, how you're, you're checking for temperature. Uh, sometimes you just have to touch your food. All right. I'm going to interrupt you for a minute there, Frank. Hey, go ahead. Why, why don't you go ahead and tell us all where we can find our recipes and all of our social media platforms. Okay, everybody just join in Food Talk TV. Please first follow Food Talk TV. You can find all the recipes at foodtalktv.com. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch, and Pinterest. We also, Wednesday night, which is going to be after this live, there is cooking class every Wednesday night. That is beautiful, Frank. Hey, y'all, please make sure tap those screens our goal for frank today is twenty thousand likes that would be so great <laughs> so all right those screens and please share this live with five of your friends and family it helps us stay on that fyp and the fyp in case you didn't know is the for you page and it helps us out so much not just me not just frank but all of our wonderful food content creators here on food talk tv and it would just mean the world to us to support this one man here cooking tonight. He does a great job on our website. He is always on top of it with scheduling. I'll show some love and appreciation to him tonight, please. Oh, thank you. All right. So I just put the vegetable in the oven for 20, 25 minutes, maybe a little bit less. It'll depend on how the oven's running. Now let's prep the rest of the dish. Let me find where I put my cutting board. There we go. All right. So while that's roasting, you got to get the rest of it together. So the first thing you're going to want to do is this is the dressing. And this dressing is essentially it's apple cider vinegar, olive oil, uh, my herbs. I use the freeze dried herb mix. But what I did add that's a little bit different that sometimes if, if you're not familiar with it is dried cumin. I like cumin. I like paprika, especially smoky paprika. So this is salt, pepper. That's funny because you say cumin and I say cumin. Cumin. I think I think you say it right. I think it's cumin. Cumin. Is the, the correct is it? Yeah. Um, and this was a, this was a seasoning that I did not grow up with. Um, it's one that I sort of came to later on in life. The other seasoning that goes that, into this recipe. Uh, that's the fun thing about cooking when you're older, Frank, is that you can just come up with all kind of stuff, especially when you're making salad dressings like you do, you know, making your own homemade stuff. People don't realize how, like, easy it is just to make your own salad dressings, you know? Oh, man. Like olive oil, some vinegar, some just make sure you salt it really well. It's, you know, that's just how it is. I, I totally agree. It's better for you. Well, I think if it, I often find that if I'm going to make a salad dressing for the salad I'm having, then I can complement whatever it is. So if I'm doing a heavy, heavy dinner, I want a salad that's going to be bright and light, then I can make it up myself. But once you get the essence of a salad dressing down and you get your flavor, so some people like one that's more tart, some people like it a little bit more oily. Uh, I tend to always keep um, um, marmalade in the refrigerator. So I actually, that marmalade go, or honey will go into my salad dressings a lot. So what we're going to do is this is the dressing. I'm putting it in the blender. You know what I like to add a little bit of to a lot of my homemade salad dressings? Like that, that? On salads. I like to add a little bit of Parmigiano Reggiano. Oh, yes. Oh, so totally. <laughs> All right, this, now, if you've seen me do TikToks before, food, especially for food, you know I love dates. And dates are like this magic food because when they're pureed, they make something thick, creamy, 
when they're they're roasted or when you cook them with uh, orange juice, they get sweet and kind of a texture like a dried cherry. So these are really good. They're in season right now. You know, the ones you'll get, they're, they're just these thick, meaty. They're actually a great meat substitute if you're trying to cut down on a protein. What I it, what this recipe calls for is in the salad dressing, two of the dates, but I'm cutting them up a little bit to make this blender here because I don't even know how old this blender is. Um, to work, uh, work less hard, all right? So that's going to go in the dressing. And what that's going to do is it's going to help emulsify and bring it all together. At the same time, you know, work once, touch, touch, the, touch it once if you're going to double it up. I'm going to be putting these dates in the, I mean, uh, yeah, these are my jewel dates. I'm going to put these in the actual salad. So now I'm just going to cut the, the last four of them, same size pieces. I'm just going to put them back in that cup. I'm not cooking these with the vegetable. That's the one thing. I'm, I'm actually not going to cook them because I want some food that's not going to be such slow roasted flavor. Now, I can tell you, I made this recipe this summer and I used, I did everything on the grill. I didn't even use the stove. Works just as well if you like your, your if you cook your squash on the grill. So I cubed everything and I actually put them on skewers and did it that way. But I changed out and instead of using the the cumin and coriander, I use smoky paprika because of the smokiness of the grill. All right, so that is going to go when it's the, when we're all done with the dish, but they're already done. All right, I am going to make a little bit of noise here for a second. Pardon that noise. If you have an issue going to the restroom, you can also eat dates and it helps you. Yeah, they're like, they're good that way. Is it really dirty? I bet it is. All right. That is the, that is going to be our dressing. Oh, Make that's sure. Full. Yeah. It looks like and, a and I don't, sauce on my Oh, yeah. I don't want a dressing. What I want is, and I'll show you, this is how I know whether, I don't want a dressing. I want a dressing that I can make oh. a line. All right. Oh. Because I want it to, to I coat the dry, the, the hot, uh, squash that's going to come out, but I don't want it to swim. I'm going to have to try the dates because David likes dates, don't you, babe? No. He likes dates. I can't Well, you know, the interesting thing is the dates, um, like if I were using, if I were using a ninja here, these dates would be even more emulsified right now. They just help it and they give it a little bit of puree. But the nice thing about dates, uh, um, I don't drink a lot of milk or dairy or I'm not supposed to. So when I want a milkshake, I will put dates in the milkshake instead of milk. And the creaminess of the dates, as it's, as it's blitzing, gives me that thick that thickness that you sometimes can't get, get with non-dairy milk. All right. I'm going to interrupt you right quick, Frank. Hey, y'all, this is Food Talk TV. And who we have cooking here is Frank Mentor SF. And who we have in the box is just like Granny and Chef Bradley. Uh, the, Frank here has already made his vinaigrette dressing with dates that he's going to put on his acorn uh, squash acorn right uh, butternut and acorn squash yep and butternut squash i think and peppers i i kind of came in a little bit late when he was putting all together but uh he's working on this so what we would ask you please during our squash series is to please go ahead and make sure that Frank Mentoris F here gets 20,000 likes. Tap those screens. Help us stay on the FYP and please share the live. And Bradley, where can we find all of these recipes whenever we get off this live? What if we wanted to make it ourselves? You can go to foodtoptv.com. You can click on the links. You can find the recipes. You can uh, see who the creators are. You can follow the creators, which all the creators are cooking with Kaz, a lot of cooks. Sherry Skinner, Frank Mentor SF, Just Like Granny, October Dragonfly, Gluten-Free Mama Ann, Cook It Erica, and Ashby Cooking. Follow all the creators. They go live on their own. They have great recipes. You can also find us on uh, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch, and Pinterest. And so we're almost all right. You guys, let's double that for our dearest friend here, Frank. He is a wonderful content creator and he works very, very hard on our website. So please tap those screens and help him stay on the FYP and help us out. 
We love y'all. Oh, I got to keep up with hey, you all. Take it away. All right, so here's the next step. Let's go back now. So we've got we've got vegetables roasting in the oven. We've made our dressing. Now this is gonna. This is remember you mentioned layered. Well, this is a, the, a, another layer. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna use that in a minute. So what I'm doing now is making the dry ingredients. I've got my freeze dried uh, herb mix. I've got about probably about a quarter of a teaspoon of coriander. Quarter of a teaspoon uh, more of my uh, cumin. And what do you think the next one's going to be? Uh, chili flakes. Actually, I already put the chili flakes in it, and I'm going to put them on top. So instead of chili flakes, now if Miss Sherry was in the room, she'd be like, oh, when's he going to put nutmeg in? No, I'm not putting nutmeg in. I'm putting cinnamon. Cinnamon in savory food is really underrated unless you're used to eating certain Middle Eastern and Mediterranean foods. But there's a warmth to cinnamon. So when you add it to a, a dish like this and it pairs so nicely with the squashes that it actually is like, oh. And sometimes you can't even taste that it's cinnamon. It just tastes this really good flavor. So this is my... Goes great with uh, Middle Eastern foods and stuff like that, especially squash and and stuff like that. Is that? Clo all spice. Yeah, yeah, and I do keep a little bit of that. I, I use it a lot. I like all of that five spice, clove, nutmeg. Um, I even keep, you know, uh, let's I've face it. I always, I always have a bit of pumpkin pie mix spice at home. So now this is the dry mix that's going to go as soon as the roasted pumpkin comes out. So remember, we, we put a little bit of salt, pepper, olive oil as we were roasting. Now, this is the dry seasoning that's going to go on top of that when it comes out. And Fred, right. uh, the thing I wanted to say is once I, since I've been living in Sweden, one of the things I've really liked, a new spice, is uh, white pepper and juniper berries. You know, white pepper I like. I don't use it often. Uh, I can't eat juniper. I'm allergic to the juniper plant. Uh, so oh. juniper is not one that, uh, and it, I, it's one of those kind of flavors that I uh, like hazelnuts. Since I never had it, I don't miss it, but it's one I can't eat. All right. These are pomegranates. All right. Now, this is a sad looking pomegranate. Literally, there were three left when I, and I bought one and went back today. There were none. Usually, they're bright red as we go into this time of year. But Inside a pomegranate is one of my absolute favorite treats. And this one's just not that pretty. So normally, this is what happens. They have these beautiful jeweled seeds. And you can eat the seeds. You don't eat this part. This one's pretty sad. It's on its way out, which is probably why um, there were none left. But since I have it, I'm cutting it. I'm not going to use it. But let me show you how to get these out of here. All right, because they can, you know, you, there are a lot of work to get all of them out. Now, luckily, a lot of the stores, a lot of grocery stores now, you can actually buy them already seeded. Pomegranates are great for you to eat. But here's a trick. Bowl of cold water, your pomegranates, put them upside down in the water, and then just move your fingers under the skin. And it feels really kind of weird because you can feel the little seeds coming out. And they come out. Now, normally, if this was a right, this was not so overripe. You'd have all these beautiful jeweled pomegranate seeds at the bottom, and all of the fibers is comes to the top. And then all you do is drain it, and you have your own fiber, uh, pomegranate. Growing up as a kid, we would have pomegranates uh, every Christmas. They would be on the table from Thanksgiving to Christmas, and uh, we would uh, a lot of times if we didn't have a dessert during that week. We would just go ahead and my father would cut them into quarters and we'd sit there and be picking out the these little tart, sweet jewels. And still to this day, one of my favorite uh, holiday, winter seasonal things. I'm disappointed. I really wanted these because they're so pretty um, on top of this salad. But you know what? You, you improvise. No biggie. Well, you know, I just move on. All right. James says, wow, Next. that's smart. Yeah, yeah. So, I've never uh, seen I also went in the... Say it again, Brad? I've never seen it done that way. I learned something. Me too. Yeah, some people will just score 
I just cut it in half, put them in a cold thing of water. Some people will put the uh, pomegranate right at the top of the water and take a wooden spoon and, and bash it. I just put my hands in it and do my thing. So I'm just checking my... Oh, boy, the glasses got steamed up. I am checking these vegetables. That looks good. Looking beautiful. Eh, that smells good. And what I'm looking for now, obviously, this is not cooked enough. The bacon, though, is already giving some extra fat to this because, um, you know, uh, I think I think I think bacon may be our admission to Food Talk TV. I don't yes. think any of the creators dislike bacon. I definitely love bacon. I definitely love fat, too. <laughs> mm hmm. You know, uh, in moderation, fat is actually good. We do need some fat in our diet. The idea is picking the right fat. All right, so now everything is ready. I got about, I am thinking, I'm going to put the timer on because I did forget to do that, so I want to do it again. All right, let's put that on. So now the last of this really waits until the end. I'll show you what's going to go on it, and then we're going to do another recipe. This is goat cheese. Now, I, uh, I'm here in Cape Cod. Cranberries are very popular, so I found a cranberry-coated goat cheese. Uh, usually, I buy the uh, everything but goat cheese. Um, this is going to go on the salad. It's going to crumble right on top. Ooh. And then the only other thing is literally this is my last piece of basil from the garden. <laughs> uh, I, I, somebody gave us a basil plant um, this summer. I planted it in our planter. I went out there today. The weather has dropped, and that is my last piece of basil. So that's going to be the, the green garnish on this dish. It's beautiful. Do you see how waxy those leaves look? Oh, beautiful. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I am. I'm I have sorry. had a hard time with my basil this year. Yeah. Uh, all right. I'll tell you. Uh, um, I'll tell you the baby. It's funny. It's one of those things where you either have a great, a great experience with it or an awful experience. In California, I can never, uh, I can never um, grow it. Here it does really well. I think it's because of the temperature. But when I my dad died uh, some years ago, one of the things that they did, which was kind of a, a funny experience, is uh, they planted a basil plant at the cemetery. That plant was out of control. It grew phenomenal. It was like a bush. And what my sister went over one day and just hacked it down and made basil and, and made pesto and. It, at that Sunday, she gave everybody a jar of pesto, and they used to call it Dad's pesto. And then they're like, "What are you talking about?" She goes, "Oh, it's the pesto from the from the cemetery." It was the biggest bush we'd ever seen. So, just sometimes you need a little luck. All right, I am going to make another dish. We had some extra time here. I am heating up a pan. I've got um, some uh, sweet and hot sausage already cut up. I'm going to cook that down. This is something I was planning to make anyhow. I figure I have enough time. Uh, I will cook it off. And, and uh, I'm going to be making one of my favorite kind of treats as a kid was uh, sausage and broccoli and spinach bread. Now, most of the time, we would have one or the other. It would be spinach bread or broccoli bread. I'm combining them. And it's so easy because you can use it with any pre-cooked protein and, and I've actually made this with uh, fake fake sausage and then this is one of those perfect recipes for when you catch a sale at the grocery store and you buy frozen spinach and frozen broccoli so th this week they were two for one but the thing is that's uh, that's the second time I've emptied that bowl so you really want to make sure you get it all nice and dry, or at least as squeezed out as possible. The spinach has so much water in it, so I want to get it all out. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually layer this on. So it's essentially like a stromboli. Hey, Frank, I'm going to interrupt you for a few minutes. Hey, y'all, this is mm -hmm. Food Talk TV. And who we have cooking tonight is Frank for SF, and he is making... A squash salad. He already made a beautiful dressing. And now he's going to cook down some sausage and make some other things uh, to go with it. With a, right? It's like a bread that's layered with the sausage and spinach. And mm -hmm. the 
All right. Who we have down here in the bottom right corner is Chef Bradley. He is one of our newest members of Food Talk TV. And he is just too polite to interrupt people, but I'm not. It's okay. <laughs> but my name is Ashton. I'm just like Grant. And today, this is part of our squash series. And we want you guys to please tap those screens and help show support and love to Food Talk TV. Because right here, this is our website guy. And he deserves so much love and so much support, you guys. Get the 20,000 likes for him would be huge for him and he would love that so and please make sure you live with five years. and mr Chef bradley why don't you tell everybody where you can find these recipes and all about our social media and cooking you can find all these recipes at foodtalktv.com you can find all the creators at foodtalktv.com you can find us on facebook youtube instagram snapchat twitch and pinterest and you can follow all the creators, follow Food Talk TV, tap the screen, share the live, share, share, share. We're looking for 20K likes for Mr. Frank. He's doing an awesome job with the butternut acorn squash salad. Cooking club. we got night. cooking club to follow tonight. I've never, I haven't been in cooking club, but I understand that it is on Zoom and you get the ingredients, and you cook with the chefs, and then you sit down, you all eat together on Zoom. Correct. Matter of fact, you can find more information to, and to, uh, how to become a member of the cooking club on Food Talk TV. Uh, look for the cooking club link. And Chef uh, we meet is cooking club every month. It's 50 every week. $5. All right. I'm not sure the price. It's uh, it's really inexpensive because you get to buy your own food. But it, what it does is it just uh, allows us to to continue doing what we do best. Uh, it's a minimal opportunity. You also get uh, advanced uh, uh, recipes and uh, other lessons and support information. Hello, John. Welcome, everybody. Please make sure you tap those screens. We're looking for 20000 Oh, look at those pan skills, Frank. You I do know some things. I just don't always have the space to do things. But I can't I do can't stuff like do that. Y'all, I can't do that. I'm, I'm a weak, weak so girl. The, the humor, I, I do want to laugh about some of the humor here, folks. I am working in this little tiny galley kitchen with almost no equipment. So you're watching me sort of pull out my dough. I am doing it by hand because... This my my grill top, my stove top is my counter space, which is why I have these um, these uh, uh, ceramic tile on on top because it gives me some workroom. And I'm six two, so not having a counter space could be a challenge. Ooh, honey, you're almost a whole foot taller than me. <laughs> <laughs> so let me let me get this right. little kitchen in Cape Cod in the most beautiful place this time of year. I am. I am here in Provincetown. Town. I'm at the very tip of Cape Cod. Um, as a matter of fact, we've had a couple of days of rain, but it's still beautiful even in the rain. And uh, I came up here to um, do some work and close up the condo for the summer, you know, for the winter, because since I live in California normally, uh, and I am not, it is not a hardship. I just, you know, for me, it's, it's the challenge of cooking when I'm not surrounded by every gizmo I have at home and I actually enjoy that and I'm here by myself so I I do cook for myself while I'm here and I get to cook all the foods that I don't normally eat because people I cook for at home don't like them well I actually lived in an RV for a year so I know I know what that's like yep I've lived in all right a so but no heat. what's that I lived in a double wide with no heat and air and no under and my uncle stole the electricity from the neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can remember the the summer my I can remember the summer we um we couldn't really afford to take a vacation, so my father rented a um a double wide upstate and neglected to tell my mother there'd be no running water, that the bath would be in the creek and that the 
the bathroom was a portalette that we had to empty at the end of every day. That did not go over well, I can tell you. All right, so I am just cooking off by the time six minutes elapses. These will be par cooked. I will be putting them back in the bowl. I will then be adding the spinach and broccoli. I'm, I'm uh, only adding the spinach and broccoli to heat it up because I don't want to have a hot and a cold then go in this roll to bake. Uh, but it got about five minutes, so I'm going to check. Let's take a peek at this roasted vegetable salad that's cooking. This bay has and I know. Vegetables lately? What? What's that? I was about to say, have you checked your vegetables lately? That looks beautiful. That does look beautiful. I love the colors. It's very fall, Frank. You were doing it. It is very fall. So now normally this still has a little bit to go as they'll roast and get a little bit more mellow. One of the ways that you can serve this, I'll talk about, there's three different ways you could serve this salad. Right out of the oven, you throw it in, you throw it in your pretty bowl. This is my favorite bowl. I found this at the thrift store. It says the end in the duck, but it matches that the condo in blue. You would just pile it in, and there's your side dish. You put your, your extra dates on top, put a little herbs, and then what I'm going to do to finish it off is I'm going to put some uh, roasted pecans. You can also use pistachios. That's one way to serve this dish. Frank. What's that? You, I have a question for you. You grew up in an Italian home, right? I have, yes. So is that why you took my with wooden utensils is that an italian thing um no i you know what i like wooden. i do like wooden utensils i tend to not want to uh scratch certain pans but um i i have metal like if i'm using a wok i'll use a different different tool um i just i like these kind of flat wooden tools and they're you know they're not technically what i should be using but in this case it works for me Joanne says, I think walnuts would be good, too. What is your take on that, Frank? Walnuts is another um, great texture fatty nut. So if the walnut is toasted before, and I think walnuts, um, walnuts, pistachios, pecans, they all kind of can change out for this kind of recipe. I think it's total preference. Um, almonds are a little bit too hard. You want a nut that's going to be uh, have a little bit of bite, but not so hard and i love almonds but um uh, those yeah, would be you want to you want an oily fatty nut i also think that almonds have a little bit of a sweet taste and you're already trying to counteract all the sweet taste with the fattiness of the nut so you don't want to choose nothing that has something so to it because you're already exactly no that so makes I, total total sense i see so the, um flavor profiles you're going with here and I like it well and you know the thing is is I'm trying to even these, though these would be two two different sides for a meal um normally they would be one like this the the Italian um, spinach bread and with the meat that would be more of an appetizer bread or sometimes as a, 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 um, a side dish on the table my family yeah. never needed an excuse to put cheese and, and stuffing in a bread at all that's your bread. um Right there. I put in one package of frozen thawed broccoli and one package of frozen thawed spinach. Um, in this case, I went protein heavy. I could do this all just with the vegetables and it would be just as good. It looks good like that. I could eat it. <laughs> that does look good. And we're almost at 20K likes. Thank everybody for the likes, the follows, and the shares. Please follow Food Talk TV. You can find everything all the recipes at foodtoptv.com you can find us on facebook youtube instagram snapchat pinterest twitch and sometimes bama says tinder is bama on the, is she on here tonight i don't Guada see cook. Her. hey Guada cook it, 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 let me know if, if sherry is on i gotta show her something if she's on sherry, she is at church i don't oh, she I is at church Yep, that would make sense. It's Wednesday. Okay, so. Do you have any questions for Frank? Because you've been awfully quiet, and I've been over here running my big old southern mouth. I'm just listening. Well, do you have questions for fish or any thoughts? Uh, I'm just waiting for it to come all together. I've 
got a list of all of his ingredients. I really want to taste it, but I'm not sure what he's doing with the bread. I think he's going to roll it up and bake it. I am. That's exactly what I am going to do. So you so can write what I'm gonna... ingredients? Say again? A... You've been writing down all the ingredient ingredients? Of course I did. That is so <laughs> smart. I am so proud of you, Chef Bradley. That is I just notes on thing. We hit 20,000, y'all. Let's try to get them to 25. Thank you, everybody. All right. So what I just did is I did a quick stir fry of sausage making a big mess. I added some onions. I added two packages of thawed vegetable. In this case, it was spinach and uh, broccoli. Normally, in, in a lot of Italian-American households, we would make this clean. We would uh, make this as a typical bread. What I'm doing now is I'm taking it out of the pan because I want it to uh, to cool down a bit. Now, let me let me tell you a little something here. When you're working with grated cheese, this is just a packaged grated cheese. It's what I could find. Um, grated cheese, except for some very specific recipes, you don't ever want to put grated cheese in a dish that's hot directly on the on the stove, what will happen is it will separate and become oily. So there are certain dishes where it's appropriate, but normally you work with grated cheese in a dish, you do it while it's off the stove and you just let the residual heat melt it. Ooh, yeah, I could just that eat that. That looks good. You could eat this. You know what this is really good in? I'll be honest. Um, you could, if I boiled pasta, this could go in a pasta oh, right now. Hey, pasta. Oh my God, I was. No, like, you could put this in a pasta, no problem. But I'll tell you, the other thing that this goes great in a baked potato as a oh. topping for baked potato. Um, for folks who are carb, low carb, this is there. This is so indulgent that you do not feel like you're going to miss the bread. Now, I have a question if you didn't want to use broccoli, could you use asparagus? Um, I have used spinach, I have used um diced up uh, zucchini squash. I have not used uh, asparagus. I tend to like to keep asparagus by itself because it's such a strong flavor, because but I'm I sure you could. Thinking because of the cheese you used in my head, I was thinking of like asparagus and uh, like chopped in the little pieces and mm -hmm. um, uh, ch uh, cocktail tomatoes and letting them roast a little bit with it. And yep. then add the spinach, some lemon, and uh, the cheese with the sausage. And I was just thinking, oh, I bet that would be so good. Because I love asparagus and I love broccoli. Like, I love vegetables. <laughs> now, to that yeah, same end, if I were going to do asparagus, I would probably dice ham up and do ham with a Dijon mustard under the bread. Oh, okay. what were you saying, Chef Bradley? Joanne said in an omelet, but I'm thinking I could take that and I could make empanadas. Oh, yeah. Ooh. This filling that I just made in, what, six and a half minutes, ten minutes max, you can use it. I've used it, uh, and I usually would make extra of this. So I would use it in omelets the next day. I have used it in um, casseroles, empanadas if I wanted to get crazy and make extra dough. I'm not a big baker, although I can bake. Oops. Okay, the, the effects of live activity on a small space. All I'm doing right now is I am rolling this sucker up and putting him to bed. Hey, Frank and Chef Bradley, tell me you're a foodie without telling me you're a foodie. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? There's so many things around food. All right. So now all I'm doing is I'm tucking in. Now, this is a whole wheat dough. It's what I found commercially available in my grocery store. You can use whatever you want. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat that it's got a little bit of a hole because you actually are going to put holes in it because you, when the when this cooks, you need you need um, steam, so Stomach you want to have some uh, expansion. So don't worry, I got a hole in it. Frank, that looks like me popping at the seams. <laughs> you and me both. Let me tell you. All right, so let it, let it, let let's check what we are here for. While he's checking that, please tap this, tap, 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 share the live and follow Food Talk TV. Just click the little button up there. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch, 
and Pinterest. We even have cooking class. You can sign up cooking classes Wednesday night, which will follow this. And a bunch of awesome, awesome, awesome creators and awesome recipes. Uh, you just, you'll love it. Just follow Food Talk TV. All right. So let's show, show you how we want to test it. You can make this much more roasted if you like. I it's, just it's, it's, edible. It, it's edible right now, but how do you know it when it comes to the squash? I'm going to grab one and put it by the camera. Without almost any pressure, the knife goes in. Perfect. Now, if you didn't have butternut squash, could you use sweet potatoes and carrots instead? Oh, yes. You can use honey nuts, sweet potatoes, pumpkin, um, I do actually make a version of this with carrots because I love to roast carrots. I make carrot hummus all the time. Um, I find that this recipe works with any fall uh, beta carotene rich uh, vegetable or fruit. So pumpkin technically is a fruit. It's a gourd. Asking in the comments, Frank, what kind of sausage did you use? You used a sweet and a hot sausage, right? Yeah, I love hot sausage, but sometimes it doesn't love me. So what I did is I used two hot sausages and three, uh, four sweet sausages. Mm. Now the sausages I buy are fennel rich because I love to taste the fennel in sausage. Um, but you buy the one that you like. If you want to use chicken sausage, you can use chicken sausage. Doesn't really matter. You know, fun fact about fennel, it's really good for your kidneys and it's an actual natural diuretic. Yep. And fennel grows all over the place. So I always have fresh fennel. Matter of fact, I have a fennel and kale salad that is one of my absolute favorites because it's a great um, catering salad because you can make it, kale is like indestructible and you add tomato, I mean, you add um, uh, um, orange slices to it and it's a great buffet party salad that doesn't wilt. And the fennel just gives it that great you, anise flavor. I admire all right. you. You are so creative in the kitchen, and you just use all kind of different flavor stuff that, like, nor uh, like I wouldn't even think of. And well, you I know that that fennel salad, Ashton. There's a reason you probably wouldn't have known about it because it's actually a, a very traditional Italian dish. It's a traditional uh, fennel and orange is is a Christmas very traditional Christmas um, uh, Christmas salad or, or dish. So you might not have ever come across it. Yeah, All right, so I am going to now put this little kit in here, and I am going to throw it in the oven. I use parchment paper because I simply do not want to clean up yet one more thing. But, Drizzle. Um, Frank. What's that? I just know that you're a really big inspiration when it comes to Italian food in my kitchen. I'll always talk to David, and I'll be like, what do you think Frank would do with this if I was <laughs> an Italian? So just letting you know. Well, you know, it's funny because I get stuck sometimes reaching for the same ingredients, and then I'm like, why does this all taste very similar? So I have to even check myself. It's why I love all of our food recipes because I get to try profiles that I wouldn't normally cook. Now, what I just did is I took that bread – and I threw it in the oven. I'm going to just change out the racks because I want to cook it on the lower rack. If it's not done by the time we're, we are wrapping up because we have food uh, food club coming up, cooking club, I will be posting what it looks like. So let's wrap up this salad. I have my wonderfully – oh, I guess that fell out. I guess I can eat it. Oh. <laughs> now, you could throw these under the broiler if you want more char. I don't want them to be so – uh, mushy that I, they don't hold up. It's supposed to be a salad. Now this is the dry mix. It has cumin, cardamom, cinnamon, black pepper, and salt, and uh, some herbs. I'm adding that now. And I just want to lightly toss it to... Now all of those spices as they, they heat up are just going to... Like I just got this whiff. I could just the heat, the residual heat, all of a sudden I got this whiff of cumin and cardamom and it's just like changes the whole profile in the sense of oh what is this now let's let me grab this so i have some space to work with that's off all right so let's plate up a couple different ways you could serve this 
And while he's getting ready for that, please, please tap the screen, share the live. You're watching Frank Mentor SF cooking. He's made a butternut acorn squash and an awesome dressing. And he's got a sausage roll in the oven. Uh, you can follow us on Food Talk TV. Go to foodtalktv.com for all the recipes. You can also follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitch, Snapchat, and Pinterest. Now, does anybody. And we try to have as many of the recipes up on the In the Kitchen blog on the website. Now, does anybody know why he layered the basil on top of it before he sliced it? Because I'm trying to be fancy. No, but a reason why. Jeff Bradley, do you know? Why he did what? Why he layered, layered the basil? the basil on top of each other before he rolled and sliced it. Because you, you layer them, you roll them, and you slice them, and it helps keep the flavor in the basil. Right. When you cut basil with a metal knife, it turns black. So this is called a chiffonade. It also makes it look nice as a topping. Otherwise, our secret is just use the scissors. But basil is one of those herbs you got to do really at the end because it will go black. All right, so here's how a couple different ways you would serve this. Is that ricola? Uh, ricola? Arugula. I love arugula. It's peppery. It's one of my favorite. Since we're at the beach, I got my cute little beach bowl. So this is if you wanted to serve this as a salad. All right. Okay, you guys, I wish you could smell this. It's the, the herbs and the seasonings that are layered in at the last minute are just basically walking. It's like going into your favorite spice store. Are you going to add cheese to this? Please. I am. I am. So now you're going to add in your little pieces of... Dates. Dates on top. You're going to add some of your nuts of preference. In this case, pecans. Pecans, pecans, I don't care how you say it. It just depends on who's hollering at me. That's what I'm going to say. I'm going to add a little bit of fresh basil on top to make it look a little prettier. And then the last piece is taking that goat cheese. With the cranberries. With the cranberry. Now, remember, this is already sweet and savory. So the goat cheese with the cranberry just adds this extra brightness all of a sudden. And I'm going to just put little pieces of goat cheese all around it. All right? Just like that. Of course, it'll be very messy. So using a, a plain goat cheese might be to your liking. But I find that, that because there's all these other rich flavors, the addition of the blueberry in the um, goat cheese just kind of gives me a little bit of a palate lift. And then you come back and you give your hard dressing that we already there's that and, and you just literally pour it on. Oh. So there is how you would serve this as a salad. Okay. Now, if you wanted to serve this as a side dish, you essentially do the same thing. You take your you take your um, cooked vegetables, put them in a bowl. Pour in the dressing while it's still warm. You want that dressing, and you'll see, you can see um, it has little pulp left in it from the dates when I blitzed it. Mix it all up, and you've just created your salad. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add my, my nuts right to it. I take my fancy bowl that I would be serving it in because, you know, you're going to we're going for the holidays somewhere. We can't be walking in with Tupperware, although it wouldn't be the first time I did, or in my case, lock and lock. That bowl would make me sad because when I got to the bottom and it said the end, it would just be another reminder. It'd, it'd be a exactly. reminder. More left. <laughs> and then I put my, my dates around it. I take my nuts, add a little more nuts. Always put nuts on the top of whatever you're serving nuts in because you want people who are allergic to nuts to know that there's nuts in it. That is smart. Yeah, anytime I put anything that I think is going to be a little bit of an issue with allergy, especially nuts, um, I will try to put it on it so that people know. 
arrange your goat cheese on it. It'll melt. It'll get soft. It's more for just a pretty effect because it gets all over. And then last thing. Now, with it being a, a salad and a side dish, would you squeeze fresh lemon on any of this? As a matter of fact, I could. In the dressing, I put some lemon, but if, if I if I wanted to, I would just put a little bit of squirt. I might not do it on the side. Um, I would probably more likely do that as on the salad just to brighten it up last minute um, versus the side dish, which generally is more um, meant to be warm and savory. So now you have one dish, two different ways. I said there was a third dish you could make with this, right? Yep. You're making chicken. It's mid mid midweek, right? You're gonna make a chicken, and you want a stuffed chicken, and you want dressing. Take this exact same mix, exactly make it exactly how you made it, and then add cornbread, leftover cornbread, stale bread, a little bit of chicken stock, and you just made an incredible stuffing or dressing. Whether you put it in the bird or just bake it alongside it. You just made three different, or as it was mentioned earlier, Brad mentioned using it as an empanada filling. But this one mix can take you three or four different ways. I think you need to send that to me so I can taste it. Me too. Here, because I know, I, I know, I know Kaz is looking, so I got to make it pretty. I have a question now. Is this all gluten free as well? Uh, let me double check. Everything on here is gluten free, and be, uh, it, it, it would be meat free if I didn't add the bacon. But everything else is gluten free. There are nuts in it. There is vegetables in it. There's olive oil in it. There's some lemon juice and the dates, which are are uh, uh, is a fruit. So that everybody is two different ways to do a winter salad. This would be perfect portion if you were going to have it as a as a salad like to like this would be one person um if i were going to do like i could serve this for two people if we had something else like uh, grilled cheese or or a bowl of soup or a piece of meat or a piece of fish this would be great for leftover turkey this is how you could serve it as a this is how you would serve it you were going to bring it to that holiday meal that you're going to or you're serving the nice thing is you can prep almost half of this the day before and then just uh, if you even roast off the vegetables the day before and then just throw them in the broiler to heat them back up before you mix it all up and finish it. What about your sausage roll? Is it done? Uh, let me see. I do not think so, but I can show you what it's looking like um, a few minutes in right now. And yes, what it looks like with Miss Gonzalez. That is beautiful, beautiful, nice plating. It yeah, absolutely. And I know I guess I'll do like those other people who do on those real cooking shows. I will make a little bit of a plate for myself. Oh, I better not because I did not take a picture. So you know what? I'm just going to eat right because I'm the only one here. So mm. of course I want a perfect bite. I want a piece of date. I want a piece of cheese. Yes. You all know how I love my cheese. I see your face. Amazing. Can you turn the camera? Yeah, let me see. Can you see me? Yep. Handsome as always. Oh, my God. I am telling you guys, this is not what you would think. And it, uh, I, I think even people who don't like Traditional squash are going to love this because you get this under under flavor of the cumin, the cinnamon, the, the cardamom, which a lot of Americans don't cook with unless they grew up with it. With the nut, the texture, the crunch, the cheese, the little sweetness from the cranberries. And it's great. You know, tomorrow I'll have it as leftovers. It's just as good. So I will get this recipe up. I'm hoping by tonight, if not tomorrow late. Any questions? What's happening in your room? Idea, Frank. What's that? The gluten-free mama gave me a good idea. I can make that, and I can serve that with ahi tuna, seared ahi tuna. Oh yeah, you could. 
you, you definitely want to serve this with something that has a strong, independent flavor. I would say anything that has a, a good, clean flavor. That's why it, it goes well with turkey, with chicken. Hey. Um, what? It's new. Oh, you hit me talking to David. Talking to the cat. Oh. Uh, Trouble. He's messing with my pictures on my walls, and he thinks he's cute, and he looked at me and wagging his tail now. All right, folks, it's 7 o'clock here. That means I gotta, we're going to jump off so people can jump over to Cooking Club tonight. But um, or, and any of those who, who want to go Cooking Club, please don't feel bad. Get your butt over there. You know what it's like and how fun that is. Those of you who have other questions, I'll hang out for a little while longer as well. All right, I have Everybody to go. Here, if you're not uh, following Food Talk TV, please follow Food Talk TV. Awesome, awesome creators. They have recipes. You can go to foodtalktv.com and find all their recipes. We have at least one creator every day cooking, sometimes two, like today. And you can follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitch, and Pinterest. No, ma'am, Nicole, Cooking Club is something that you pay for that we do on Zoom. And it's tonight. And tonight, I think we are making a fish by Trisha. All right, y'all. Yeah, I, I think it's like a, a battered fish. Club, we appreciate 20,000 likes. Like, that is so amazing. And we are so grateful. And thank you all for the shares. And we love you. And I got to go. All right. Until next time. We'll see Bye. you. Thanks, everybody. Bye. I'm going to end that live so people can jump on and get on with their evening. Feel free to reach out if you've got questions from me anytime. Thank you, Frank, for letting me join. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye now. Bye.